Well, first, I'm going to start recording. This is um, lecture number four for 140 Business. I am now going to share my screen, and we have the following question. It says, the histogram below shows the time visitors to a museum spent browsing an exhibit on a Saturday. There were 300 visitors that day. The following histogram is of the data collected. The number of visitors have spent less than 25 minutes, less than 25. Uh, the number, so this is not a percentage, this is a number. Uh, let's take a look. So I have five and 35 for a total of 40. Uh, so what is it closest to? It's closest to 30. I, I agree with you, it wasn't really the greatest question. Uh, it would be nice if one of the answers was 40, but it is closest to 30. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Thank also, you. the answer is 30. These are the correct answers, right? This is, yeah, this is the correct answer. Um, would There's another question that was kind of like a... Um, the other one, there's one here. It says, this is the same, uh, this is um, the same example. It's certainly skewed right. It's not symmetric, which is the same thing as skewed right. And it has an outlier, or at least it looks like it's an outlier. So all of the above seems the appropriate uh, uh, response for this one. Was that the one that you would in mind? No, it was a bar graph and another graph. It was at this, uh, the differences between them. Uh, the difference between a histogram and a bar chart. Yeah. How's this one? So a bar chart displays a categorical variable because the bar chart is only for categorical data and a histogram does not because a histogram is for quantitative data. Okay. Right, that's the big difference between them, right? Pie charts and bar graphs are for categorical and stem plots and histograms and now box plots are for quantitative. Professor, there was another, uh, another one for business schools. For it was business. 25 different business schools and um it was a histogram as well business school i think it was number six but i'm not sure no, this one here yeah the following histogram represents the distribution of acceptance rates among 25 business schools in each class interval the left end point is included but not the right so this first one is 10 inclusive to 15 not inclusive so what is the approximate spread of the data so they use the term spread here when they really meant range, which was which was bad, but it goes from 10 to 50. So the spread was 40. I mean, the range is 40. So from, for the very last little piece, it's yeah. an inclusive to 45, correct? Well, no, it's 45 to 50, so up to 49.9. Yeah, so then wouldn't it be 50 or? No, 10 to 49.9, 10, 10 to about 50 is 40. All right. Right, you're starting at 10. That's the beginning of the first one. And you get to just about 50, correct? Yeah, but I, I just assumed that we're rounding up. That's why. Well, wait, rounding up to what? I mean, the first. So I thought I, I was under the impression that that little last piece it was inclusive to 45. Well, no, because look here, here's 30 and here's 40. Yeah, right? but yeah, so 45 would be inclusive to there. This is 45, this is 50, correct? Yeah, yeah. So this bar, I mean, there's no question this bar is 45 to 50, right? Yeah. 45 inclusive, 50 exclusive, but that's up to 49.9. So the, 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 the best, the approximate spread of the data would certainly be 40. All right. right. Again, this was the first quiz. Each quiz is 3% of the grade. So it's not, it's not, you know, a huge factor. Um, but, um, but hopefully, hopefully it wasn't horrible. Right. And 10 questions. So each one is 0.3% of the grade. So even if you got three wrong, that's 1%. So, so um, hopefully it wasn't horrible. All right, so let us now start. Let's open up, please, the, um, the workbook, the Math 140 Business Workbook, you should all have it. 
And what we're going to do for the rest of today, for the next uh, hour or so, is work through the exercises in Chapter 2. We are not moving on to Chapter 3. So I'm looking in the workbook on page 15. Okay. Are we all together? On yes. 15, okay. Excuse so, me? Sorry? I never got my email that my uh, workbook is ready for pickup. Uh, I'm not sure what work, I'm not, I mean, I, I, I put it under files, you can download it. It's free. Uh, okay. There's no, um, I don't think there's a physical, is there a physical one? Does anyone have a physical one or just the, On the one? Website, I think it's only digital. Uh, um, yeah, and it's free. Uh, I, I, um, I, everyone should have it under files, correct? Sure. Correct. Right? Is that where it is under files? Yeah, you can go to files and it's like the only one that pops up. Yeah. What page are we on again, Professor? 15. Okay. 15 is the beginning, it looks like, of chapter two. All right, so let's see what we can get through. So, Question one, here's a dot plot of the data for a Math 140 class for the question, how much money you think your best friend would spend for your birthday gift? Without doing any calculations, choose a number that you feel represents a typical value for this data. So just by looking and an intuitive feel, what is a typical value for the, for the, uh, for the amount spent based upon this dot plot? What will be a typical value? Anyone. And preferably not everyone at once. Actually, there's only three questions in this uh, in this chapter for the for the workbook. So I think I think we'll finish. Uh, ten. Would it be ten? Okay, I don't know. I'm asking you. So the guess is <laughs> part A. The guess is ten. Okay, uh, and a few people said 10. And it certainly is the mode, even though a mode is not something that we, we cover in this class, but what is a mode? We know what a mean is, we know the what a- number repeated more than, like the number that repeated the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah the mode is a number that's repeated the most. So you can see here that 10 is repeated the most times. Um, and I, you know, Kevin said uh, a 10 with a question mark. He's like, I don't know, is it 10? Uh, maybe, uh, it's hard to tell. So let's go ahead in part B and actually calculate the mean. So how do we calculate the mean? What is the method to calculate the mean of a set of data? Add them all together and then Divide by the number of them? We're divided by the number of them. So let's try to do this as quick as we can. Uh, I got a zero. I have two twos. Now, is that a one and a two? What do you think that, that, that double dot means? I think it's a one and a two because it, well, how many data points are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. It is one and a two, I'm pretty sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I think so as well. So one plus two plus three plus four plus four plus eight plus 20 plus six plus seven plus eight plus 50 plus 14 plus 45 plus 80 plus 24 plus 50 plus 26 plus 28 plus 120 plus 35 plus 40, plus 45, plus 55. So that wasn't that bad. Notice how I um, added a bunch together that happened to have the same value. So I got 667, and then we're gonna divide that by the 39 people in the class, and that gives us a mean of $17 10 cents. Oh, actually look in the parentheses here. 
one student gave a value that was not a whole number, namely a dollar fifty. So it wasn't six sixty seven. It was sixty seven point five. And that alters the, the mean by um, two pennies, two cents. So $17.12 would be the mean. While we're at it, what's the median? How do I find the median? I'm not sure if this is part C, I'm just guessing. Uh, yes, it is, okay. How would I find the median of this data? Is that when you put them all like in order? Well, they already are in order, which is nice. And then you just do the middle number. Okay, so 39 data points. Which one's the middle number? 20. Oh, the 20th, the 20th data point, right? Not the number 20, but the 20th data point, correct? So let's identify the 20th. All right, so what is the 20th data points? Fifty? Fifty five zero? Fifty five zero? One five. One five. $15. So the median is $15. The median, the mean is $17, 12 cents. The mode is 10. Just before going any further, the fact that the mean is 17, 12 compared to the median of 15, which way is this graph? Is the graph symmetric? Is it skewed right or is it skewed left? I think it's skewed to like the right. Okay. It's so, also pretty unsymmetric. So. Right. It's certainly not symmetric. And I have a long tail on the right side of those four data points. And remember, the mean is always pulled further in the direction of skewness than the median. So the fact that the mean is 17.12 versus 15 for the median would indicate that it is skewed to the right, which will possibly be one of the questions after C. Let's keep going. Part D, were half of the students in the class above the mean and half below? Were half above the mean and half below? No. No. It's the mean. It's the exactly. That's not the mean's purpose. That's the median's purpose. So if not, does this mean that you made an error in computing the mean? Again, no. They are two completely different things. The mean is a is a is a weighted average where we actually care about the actual numbers and how they contribute. The median is just the middle one. And it's not until we get to the mid middle one that we even look at its value. So the mean and the median are very, very different. And uh, I mean, presumably they should be close to each other because they're both measures of center, but they certainly don't have to be, especially if it's skewed. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, question number two. The stem plot below shows the populations of the 15 United States and Washington DC in the year 2000 in terms of millions of people. Um, presumably, presumably, when it says three, four, it's not 34 million, but rather what? What do you think the three, four is referring to? Or maybe it is. What's the most populous state in America? Anyone know? California. Probably. New York or California would be my guess. New York or California. Texas. Or Texas, the most, maybe it is, I don't know. Let's do a Google search. Most populous state in USA. It says, I think I just want to talk about it. I'm sorry? Um, sorry, um, what's it called? If, sorry, no, go ahead. So California is the most populous state in the United States that currently has almost 40 million people. Texas, oh, by wow. the way, Texas, by the way, is number two and New York is number four. What's number three? Ah, what's number three? Can anyone guess what would be number three? Would it be Florida? It is Florida, according to the Google. And what does Google know? But according to Google, number three is Florida. There's a lot of crap. Uh, a lot of what? 
a lot of crackheads. <laughs> a lot of what? Crackheads, like the Florida peoples that you read about on the on like social media and stuff, like those funny we, stuff. We do hear about a lot of that. That's true. So this so this 34 is most probably 34 million. Remember, this was this was 21 years ago. So if we're at 39.6 million now, um, it, this is probably 34. And in fact, that's what part A is asking, right? California was the most populous state with a population of 34 million. How many states had a population of approximately 1 million in the year 2000? How many states at approximately 1 million in the year 2000? Like 13? Yeah, I did it. I actually counted it twice because it kind of like blurred in my in my vision, but I counted 13. Uh, how many states have populations of at least 10 million? Eight. Would it just be one? I, I count eight. Yeah. Eight. I have 10, 11, 12, 12, 16, 19, 21. And 34. Why just one? Wait, what, what did you just count? Wait, what did you get eight from? How, eight? Well, look at, yeah. um, look at what, what's the most populous? What number is the most populous one there? 34? 34. That's certainly bigger than 10. What's the next most popular? Yeah. Um, 21. That's also bigger than 10. Next. Uh, 16, 19, which is okay. bigger than 10. That's already four, to, four of them so far. What else we got? I counted once, and that's the reason. So it would be 11, and then there's 12, 12. It would be 10, be 11, 12. 10, 11, 12, and 12. Right? 10, 11, yeah. 12, 12. That's four more for a total of eight. Right? Yeah. Okay. Part B. <laughs> Yeah, question? We wouldn't, we wouldn't count the second two or the second or the 20? I did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, oh, for the second stem of two? There's no leaf. Nothing's there. Okay. Then. So it wouldn't, I, it's it wouldn't a blank. Uh huh. Zero? Say again? It wouldn't even be an invisible zero? No, no. There's no invisible zero. Well, zero means 20. It's, it's, it's a histogram with an empty spot. You, you don't you don't not write it because there's no data there. You have to write the spot, but there's no data there. Okay, I get what you mean. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right, B. Which numerical measure is more appropriate for this data, the mean or the median, and why? Which measure of center is more appropriate, the mean or the median, and why? The most appropriate measure for what? Of center. Oh, of center. Yes. Yeah, so which I'll numerical mean? Sorry, which one? The mean. Why? Because it's very like overpopulated, and the one million two fours like in the zeros than it is the rest of the graph. I mean, the stem plot thing. Okay. Well, so answer me this following question. Last class, I gave a rule of thumb for when the mean is better to be used and when the median is better to be used. Do you recall what I said there? Uh, yeah, I have it written somewhere. So read it for me or anyone else. Can we please read it for me? So uh, isn't it when you use, you use a mean for even data points? What does that mean? Even data points. I don't think or, I use that terminology or even, uh, I forgot what you call it, but well, uh, it's important. It's important. What did I say? When do we use the mean and when do we use the median? Uh, I found it. Uh, if, if the distribution is not highly skewed, there are no outliers, then use mean. Okay. And so, it, oh, sorry. No, it's okay. So, look at this data. Is it highly skewed or are there outliers? Uh, it, it's, um, yeah. Yes, it's both. It's both. 34 is an outlier, at least it's, I'm pretty sure it's going to be an outlier. And it is seems skewed to the right. So we, go ahead. I was just going to say it's not like highly skewed. It is skewed, but like. 
Well, again, it isn't like that long, but I guess it could just be like. Well, but again, look look at the distance between twenty one and thirty four. That's a that's a thirteen difference. That's um. That's, that's I guess I don't know. That's I, I mean, listen, there there is a mathematical way of computing skewness that you can get an actual number, although we don't do it in this class. Um, so I can't agree or disagree with you. Maybe it's highly skewed, maybe it's not, yeah. but it certainly is skewed and 34 is certainly an outlier. Yeah. I, I just thought like, even without that analogy, like the mean would just make more sense because there's like so many, like in the ones and twos that if you use the median, you would probably get like 3 million, which would not even be representative of like, I, I I'm not sure if that's necessarily valid because if you get three million, that's certainly within you know the first two rows. It's pretty close to everything in the first two rows, right? Yeah, I mean, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. If you pick the mean, well, let's let's actually write the median. How many data points are there? We know there's fifty-one, correct? So what's the median? Which data point? Um, let me see. It should be like the 26th one, right? Okay, so the 26th one is 4 million. Okay, so approximately. Yeah, so the 26th one is 4 million. So so I, I do hear what you're saying, that it might not be, well, you know what? Let's, let's do both. How's this? This will be fun. The median is 4 million. What's the mean? Let's actually go ahead and do it. So how many ones are there? 13. 13, so that's 13 plus. How many twos are there? It's less than 13, so you're gonna be kind of faster. How many twos are there? Five. Five, so that's 10. How many threes are there? Seven. 21, how many fours are there? A uh, five. 20. How many fives are there? Four. Another 20. How many sixes are there? Five. Five. That's 30. How many sevens? One. One. How many eights? Three. That's 24. How many tens? One. How many elevens? One. One. How many twelves? Two. Two. That's 24. How many sixteens? One. How many nineteens? One. One. 21s and how many 34? So I get 280, which when I divide by 51, gives me a mean of 5.5 million. So maybe you're right. Maybe 5.5 is more representative. It certainly seems skewed to me and 34 certainly seems like an outlier. But, oh, look at that. In part D, they actually did it for me, but it's nice that I got the same thing. So was your prediction in part C correct? So for me, my answer would be no. My prediction in part C was not correct because in, my, in part C, oh, well, in part, my prediction is correct. If it's highly skewed, if it's skewed right, then which is gonna be bigger, the mean or the median? Uh, the mean. The mean, the mean is gonna be pulled more than the median. So that part was certainly correct. Um, I still think the median should be better, but, um, but I, I hear your argument though. And, and, this is, and this is certainly within statistics, how two different people can look at the same data and come to two valid conclusions and reasonable conclusions based upon what they see. You're, we shouldn't have questions like that in this class where it's that vague. Um, but I, I certainly see what you're, what, what you're saying 100%, especially given the, the numerical result that I, that I calculated. So, so Awesome. Um, okay, so so D, the answer is yes, it was correct. And E, suppose the Cal population of California were 340 million rather than 34 million. That's, uh, I think, bigger than the entire population of America, or at least close. Would the mean increase or decrease? If we- it Would increase? It would increase, the mean would go up. And what would happen to the median? It would, wait, are we like replacing you? Nothing would happen. Nothing would happen. The median would stay the same. 
right? A median would stay and the, the mean would increase. Why? Because the mean is a non-resistant measure and the median is a resistant measure. The median resists that pretty well. Uh, F, what is the IQR? What is the IQR? Well, so let's go back to the data. How many data points? What was the minute? What was uh, Q2 again? What was the median? Four million. Four million, right? And that was which, uh, which of the fours is the median? Uh, I don't know. Um... 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. The first four, the first four is the median, the first four. So how many data points do I have to the left of that first four? 28. No, there's a total of 51. Oh. And the first four should be the 26th. Oh, my bad. It's okay. So how many data points do I have to the left? 28. You said 26? Oh, oh, 25 to the uh, left. 25, which means that the uh, Q1 should be which data point of those 25? 13. The 13th, which is the last one. This is the last one. And what would Q3 be? It's 13 past that first four, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. What do I get? What is Q3? Anyone? What is Q3? Is it, was it 6 million? Um, it is 6 million. And it is the last, the last six, six. Yeah. The last six I get. Okay. Um, and... Therefore, what's the IQR? Let's finish the question. What is the IQR equal to? Five million. Uh, the IQR is five million. And let's see, do they ask about the 1.5 IQR rule? Uh, they do not, but let's go ahead and do it. What is 1.5 times the IQR? Seven point five. Seven point five million. So anything to the left of four minus seven point five, or to the right of six plus seven point five, would be an outlier, correct, or at least a suspected outlier. Agreed. Right. That's the one point five IQR rule, right? Yes. Okay. Well, what is four minus seven point five? That's a negative number, so I don't really care. And what is four? Sorry, what is six plus 7.5? 13.5. Yeah, no, no. 13.5. So according to that, how many outliers do I have? Five. Yeah. Uh, four? Four outliers. I count four outliers. Because uh, 16, 19, 21, and 34. You're right. Right. Does that make sense, everyone? Yeah, no, maybe so? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so again, you know, going back to the what we talked about earlier about whether the mean or the median is correct, uh, I'm, again, I'm not arguing with what you said. You, you say things that really resonate and make sense, uh, but just from an from a algorithmic, you know, follow the procedure type of approach, given the fact that there are four outliers uh, I would say that the median is the more appropriate measure to be used, at least for this course. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. So question number three, final question for today. It says the table below shows the team payrolls for a recent season in each of the major U.S. professional sports leagues. We have the Major League Baseball, MLB, basketball, and football. Which league has the greatest range of payrolls Maximum, minus, minimum. Luckily, they are already ordered from lowest to highest for each one. 
So which league has the greatest range? Baseball, basketball, or football? Uh, baseball. 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 Thank you, New York. Baseball has the highest range. Um, which league has the smallest range? Oh, that's still part A. Which league has the smallest range? Basketball. Uh, basketball looks to be about 60, and football looks to be about 50, it looks like. Oops. Am, I, am I wrong in my math? I did it in my head, but it looks that football is a little less than basketball. Any, any confirmations on that? I think so. Yeah. All right. So football. Um, fill in the missing entries in the following table of five number summaries. Show the figures in millions of dollars. So they gave us the NBA and the NFL. Let's go ahead and do the five number summary for Major League Baseball. What's the min? Twenty-one. Uh, twenty-two. All um, right. Rounding to the nearest, correct? Yeah. What's, what's the max? The max is 209. 209. Okay. Let's find Q2. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. I count 30 teams, which I probably shouldn't have had to do if I knew anything about baseball. So, which therefore of those 30 is going to be the median? The 15? Not with an even number, it's not. Oh, 15.5. Yeah, 15.5. 15. 15. So between 15 and 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it's between which two teams? Is it 81 and 78, the Milwaukee and Cleveland? Yeah, so I'm going to do 81, 0, 0, 4, 1, 6, 7, plus 78, 9, 70, 0, 6, 7, and then divide by 2, and that gives me uh, to the nearest million. That gives me 80 million. And that's halfway between Milwaukee and Cleveland. Meanwhile, what is Q1? Um, 100. Which of the 15 data points to the left of that median would be Q1? 8. The eighth, one, two, three, four, five, six at Arizona. That's 66. And which of the ones to the right would be the Q3? Is it the Arizona Diamondbacks? Um, you're in the wrong direction. That was that was down by uh that's Q1. Those are the smaller numbers. Oh, my bad. Okay. I mean, that is correct for Q1, but what is Q3 going to be? Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah, for 119. Okay. Um, and then it says part C, complete the following display by completing the NBA box plot and constructing the box plot for Major League Baseball. You'll need to determine the cutoff values for outliers. Ooh, they want us to use the modified box plots. Look at that. Awesome. So let's first finish the MBA. Let's first finish the MBA. So uh, what, what are they currently showing for the MBA? Uh, that like majority, uh, like 60 to 70 is in the box, but they can range to like 95-ish. Right, but but uh, more specifically, what I mean is of the five number summary, which of the three, which which of those numbers have they given me graphically already? Graphically, they've given you um, Q Q one through Q three. Yeah, I don't see Q three in my graph. Q one and Q two, right? Uh, I don't think so. Q Q one would be the left edge of the box, and the box. Are we talking about MBA? Yeah, NBA. Okay. Yeah. I mean, NFL was finished and MLB didn't give me anything. Right? So in the NBA, they gave me the max, right? 93. Do you agree? That's the right side. Yes? Yes. And they gave me 73. That's the right side of the box. And then they gave me 65, which is the center of the box. 
So if I go 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, they've given me 93, they've given me 73, they've given me 65. So this is what they gave me. So how do I finish my box plot? The, find the other side. Okay, so where's the other side of the box gonna be? It says minimum is 35, right? Yeah, but that's not the box, that's the minimum. Where's the, where's the, other, where's the other end of the box? 58. 58. And now, where is the minimum? Uh, 35. 35. So this will be my box plot for the MBA. Yeah. Let's take a look if there's any outliers. Maybe we got to modify this box plot. What's the IQR? Fifty-three. For the MBA, the IQR is fifty-three. Where are you getting that from? My bad, my bad. It's okay. I forgive you. Fifteen. Fifteen. So what do we do with that fifteen? You multiply it by, by one point five. By one point five. That gives us what? Uh, 22.5. 22.5. And what do I do with that 22.5? You subtract, what was it, 35? Uh, 25.5 minus, oh, no, 35 minus 22.5. Not 35. You don't go all the way to the minimum. Then you'll never have anything past there. Huh? You don't subtract from the minimum. Oh, from the Maximum? No, from Q1. Oh, my bad. Okay, okay, we're here to learn. There's no bads when it comes to learning. So what is 58 minus 22.5? 35.5. 35 35.5, which means anything past 35.5 is, is an outlier. So do we have any outliers here? Yes. Yes, we do, which means for the MBA, I actually have two outliers and I stop not at the outliers, but rather I stop at the last non-outlier. If you look back at the data for the MBA, what is the last non-outlier? From the bottom? Uh, yeah, we're in the lower side. 35.1. Well, that's oh, okay, so that is uh, 43. So 43, which is why when I modify it, I stop it at 43 and I put in two stars. What about the other side? Any outliers on the other side? No. No. So there's no outliers on the other side. But now we got to do the Major League Baseball. And this one's going to be a longer or a more spread out grouping of data because Major League Baseball is going to go from 20 up to 210. So I'm going to go by 20s. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200, 220. Okay, so what is the minimum for Major League Baseball? 21. Uh, 22, I think we said, right? Yeah, 22. 22. What is Q1? Uh, 66. Okay, about there. What is Q2? 
80. 80. What is Q3? 119. It's like 120. And what is the maximum? 209. Okay, so this is my unmodified box plot. What's the IQR? What is the IQR? All the data is there on the page. Hello, anybody home? Well, nobody's on video at all, just me. I feel like I should go off video. Anyways, what is the IQR? 53. 53, what do I do with that IQR? Uh, do you subtract it to? I yet. I yet. Multiply by one and a half. Multiply it by one point five. Multiply it by one point five. What do we get? What do we get if we multiply it by one point five? Eighty-two point five. I got seventy-nine point five. Yeah, me too. 53 times 1.5, 79.5. What do I do with that 79.5? You subtract it from Q1 and that gives me, Q2. Good. That gives me a negative, so I don't got to worry about that side. What's the other thing I do with 79.5? You add it to Q3. Excellent. That gives me 198.5. Are there any outliers? Yes. What's the last non-outlier? Um, the last non outlier is 138. Okay, so I'm gonna go oh, 139 actually. So I'm gonna make this a outlier and stop it over there instead. And that was my modified box plot. Does that make sense? Yes, no, yeah. Mexico? all right, and then part D. Summarize your findings as if you were a sports reporter to trying to write an interesting article about the similarities and differences between the three leagues. Summarize your findings. Again, I guess we should throw in the NFL. Now, the problem is that the scales are not all the same because uh, the second one is much wider, but watch this. <gasps> watch this. So it's 20. And then I want, oh, this is not going to work. Uh, I'm having ideas here. I'm having ideas. One second. <laughs> okay. So we have that. And then there's 20, and we want 100. This is gonna work. This is not gonna work. Okay. So now, now they're pretty much um, to scale. So it's much easier now to see uh, the differences. If you, right, does that make sense what I just did? Yeah. yeah. All right, and here for the NFL, here's 20, 40, and so on. So the NFL's minimum is 76. The Q1 is 97. The median is 101. Uh, the Q3, uh, Q3 is 107, and the max is 123. Okay, so those are the three of them, and I try, try to do it to scale. So if you're a sports reporter, um, what would you say? This is not really a statistical question. It's one of those you know, wordy questions, but what would you say? I would say that the average player in the NFL makes more money than those in MLB or NBA. Wow, excellent. 
Thank you. Yeah. The average player in the NFL makes more. Yeah, look at that. In fact, I, I mean, everyone in the NFL makes more than half of major league players and 75% of basketball players. Do you see that? The entire spread for the NFL. Oh, I guess there's an outlier there. Did I, did I miss the outlier? Oh, I didn't miss the outlier. I just didn't copy it correctly. So it's, it's like... It's like this. Doesn't change what we just said. But I guess if we want to be something like this. Right? So everyone in the NFL makes more than half of major league baseball players and you know half of the basketball players, which is surprising to be honest. Uh, anything else? Anyone else see anything else? Not saying I do. I'm just saying, does anyone else see anything? Um, can, have to be related to this, or can we go? Can we skip back a little bit? Can we do what? Uh, can we go over the homework? Do you mind if you go over, over the homework a little bit? Which homework are you referring to? Homework one really threw me off. Yeah. Which I know it's like really, it's really late, but it's the, just, the, I, the, I, I en both... the entire homework, or just like one oh. question on it. Um, at first it was one question, thing. but when I got my my score back, I, yeah. I guess it's all of it. Just because I, I I wonder if it grades be, is it like all or nothing, or is it like partial credit? Like how um, it? well, let me load it up and see. So hold on a second. This is Math One Hundred and Forty Business. So let me go to the website and let's take a look at homework number one in the grade book. Um. So scores, um, so this is Kevin, right? Right, you're the one asking Kevin, was that you? Yeah, and I did really bad, yeah. Okay, it wasn't the greatest, it wasn't the greatest. Um, you spent, according to this, you spent 33 minutes on it. Now, I hope oh, I'm not, no, that's not, that's I hope another not, thing, what, Sorry. No, I, I know I'm saying I'm, I hope I'm not revealing, uh, you know, private information, but I can say this, looking at it, a number of people got in the 90 percent in the high 80s, you'll spend close to two hours on it. If not. OK, um, so, I had the issue where I would try to like, do it and then it would say that I guess the server was down. I don't know if that was just my connection or the actual website. Uh, but then when I tried to upload it, it, it like, wouldn't let me upload until this morning. Um, which I think I'll just contact them and see if it's like I don't know what's going on. I had the same issue for a little bit, but then I fixed it. I just restarted the program and that was it. But I had the same thing like yesterday, and it didn't let me in until this morning. Gotcha. Um. Uh, I mean, I. What I could do, if you like, I could make a video of all the answers and then post it on YouTube. Would that work? I can I can spend some time this weekend and I can just go through all of them and, and make a video of all my answers and then post it. If you can, just because I was yeah, confused please. as to yeah how it yeah. Please. All right, so let me do that and um, and then you you know go watch it and if you still have questions then we can certainly talk about something. Okay, thank you so okay. much. I also got an invite for tutoring. That's not from you, right? That's something else. On so, camera. Um, there should be a mass email that was sent out by um, Andrea Nemeth, I think her name is. She's the, the head of the Math Tutoring Center about setting up uh, about uh, the tutoring center. It's online and it's in person. And is that the one you're talking about or am I thinking of something else entirely? Um, it's on Canvas, like where, my, like where my classes are. I got an invite to like join, I guess, like a tutoring course. Uh, yeah. Do you know who's does it does it have like a a name for like who's in charge of that? Let me double check that. Give me one second. I think it's just okay. like something that CSUN offers, and you can just like hop in and out anytime if you need help with homework or something. Yeah, that's that's yeah. But if it's if it's who I'm thinking of, uh, Andrea runs the math department uh, tutoring center. She hires tutors, and she makes sure that there's people there who can help. So if it's from her um that 
that that would be what it is. If not, uh, I will post over the weekend uh, a link that she normally sends out. I'll look for it, um, which also lists all the times and ways to get uh, a tutoring help. That sound okay? Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome so little. All right. Otherwise, if there's no other questions, I'm going to stop recording. And I yes. One more question, sorry. Yeah. Um, so I went to retake the homework and I had one, I forgot which question it was, but it was one of the questions where I, ha I put the same exact answer that I had before because it said I had it right. And then it put the, when I went and checked what I got on it, it said it was wrong. So did, did you check? Because every time you generate the homework, it might ask a slightly different question with different numbers. Did you check that the numbers were the same? Uh, it was the same. It was the same question. Exactly. All right. Well, uh, the, the homework system is a little glitchy. It's not my choice to use it. It's the department's. Um, yeah. But if you want to send me an email with your issue, I can certainly look. Uh, I can look it over. OK, thank you so much. OK. Uh, any other questions? Okay, well, in that case, I'm going to